Greetings to everyone and welcome to Making Connections. Uh, my name is David Triana and I'm the president of Conexion Media Group. I am very excited about this show. Uh, unfortunately, my regular co-host Paola Connor could not be here today because she is on a business trip and uh, we want to wish her the best and look forward to having her back with us for the next one. Making Connections is produced by Conexion Media Group and we are also the publishers of Conexion, the English and Spanish monthly publication. I cannot believe how fast 2019 has gone. Um, I guess what they say about uh, the older you get, the faster times goes by is true. I feel old, I tell you. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Paola could not be here today, as I mentioned, but uh, here with us is Edna Hernandez, all the way from Panama City Beach. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for having me. Es un privilegio para mí estar otra vez con ustedes y traerles las noticias de los mejores eventos del mes. That's right, Edna is gonna, is gonna be doing the uh, upcoming events uh, later on during the show. Uh, y, uh, ¿Qué tipo de eventos? What kind of events uh, do you like to go to? ¿Qué, te, qué, te, ¿Qué es lo que disfrutas? Me gusta ir a los eventos de música y claro cuando hay música comida, de violín, no, rock and roll, ¿qué onda? El rock, el rock. All Tenemos right, rock and roll, rock. roll girl, huh? El rock clásico me encanta, como de los ochentas. Te va a encantar The Titans of Rock. You're going to be talking about that one later. Sí. Titans of Rock for New Year's. Y les traigo toda la información en un momento. Exactamente. Uh, again, thank you for uh, being with us uh, for uh, Making Connections. Uh, we're going to be right back. Volvemos enseguida. We have two great interviews in our show today. Uh, the, our first interviewees are going to be the founder and uh, one of the volunteers for an organization uh, called Have Hope, You Matter. And then in our second interview, we have a special appearance by uh, a local film director. Her name is Megan Caulfield. Let's go check out that first interview. With us today are two very hardworking ladies. Uh, they are Wendy Lincoln, the founder and uh, current president of Have Hope, You Matter. Yes, sir. And we also have with us Jody Mosley, who is the regional director of disaster relief operations for the organization. Welcome to our show, Making Connections. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. I know you all are very busy. Yes. But we want to talk about this wonderful organization uh, that you founded, I think, uh, last year, if not mistaken, as a result of uh, what occurred uh, in our area with Hurricane uh, Michael. Wendy, we're going to start with you. I want you to tell us more about uh, your organization, what its mission is, uh, when it was founded, and anything that you would like to tell us about it. Um, I started Have Hope You Matter on November 3rd, uh, 2018. After dealing with uh, the Hurricane Michael, I was, I was um, very passionate about helping the people. I wanted to make sure that everybody got the, their basic needs. So I um, started with just basically delivering the clothes and stuff like that that they needed. But the mission of our company is to help anybody who's going through a dark time. Um, okay. Hurricane Michael was the reason that I started it, but we help new moms. I mean, it's not a dark time for them, but it's uh, something that they are trying to prepare themselves for. So we help the, the homeless, we help um, needy vets, we help just anybody that really needs some help. And the reason why I started it was over Hurricane Michael, but we basically have expanded what our mission is. I understand. So basically it was a personal kind of thing for you. You yes. saw the hurricane occur, you, you knew that people needed help, and then you started helping. Is that yes, really that's, what happened? Yes, that's basically what happened. Um, I think some of the first things was I got put on a, a Facebook page, and I had lived on the Panhandle for so long that I've been through the hurricanes, and I know the devastation. And when I actually drove into the devastated area in Mariana, and I saw it right there like two weeks after the hurricane, I was, I, was, I, I just, all I could do was cry. I mean, it was, it was very, it, the devastation was unreal. It was incredible. And as I drove into Blunchtown and started seeing it, I just knew in my heart that I need to do something to help. Mm -hmm. And so um, I started out basically wanting to just reach out and help. And what what is the region that uh, that your organization covers? Um, we started out with just the Hurricane Michael area, but now I mean we've I've developed relationships so we can go as far as Tallahassee. 
Um, we have gone as far as Pensacola. Uh, we help with the homeless there. And I mean, I even helped with Hurricane Dorian, but uh, mostly it's just the panhandle. Good, good, good. Are there any specific you know, examples of things that, you know, that occur in the last several months relative to or related to Hurricane Michael that kind of stick in your mind? Any, um, any, any specific things? I think some of the, the conversations that I had at the very beginning when uh, people would contact me because I started out just to try to help with hygiene. And when people would call in and they would say, I don't have any clothes or, you know, I went to some some places that it's just it was heartbreaking. But I had one situation where a mom contacted me because I wanted to do Christmas for the kids. And um, the mom contacted me and she was telling me that she didn't know what you know, to give for her child. And I was surprised because I couldn't understand, you know, why didn't you know what you, you need for your child? And basically what it was is her daughter has um, a rare disease mm -hmm. and she is on um, she has a trach and she has um, basically a feeding tube. And the story that she told me uh, was that, you know, I asked her, well, you know, what for Christmas? And she said, well, my daughter listens to music at night to sleep. And I mm. said, okay. And so she told me that she had an old boom box. And I said, okay. Um, so I reached out, I did a lot of networking and a lady donated a CD player. And so when I was talking to her, she told me that it, the town came together and they donated their generators and their gas to keep her machines going. Wonderful. That's and it. so that was that was the very first thing I did was I got her a CD player and cause, and, and basically it was a 1980s boombox. It was a big <laughs> one. And so I was like, okay. I bet, I, I bet you she didn't care. No, <laughs> and and I and you know and she's she's been in my heart ever since. And That's awesome. she was my very first child and one of the very first people I helped. That's wonderful. So um, her and that was basically what kept me going, you know, is helping that situation. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And uh, Jody, you are the regional director for disaster relief operations for the organization. Yes, sir. What, what does that mean? What do you do? Um, basically, that means that I am boots on the ground on, in whatever area is devastated. Um, we go out. We don't get on main roads, we get the back roads. We get the areas that most people don't see, mm -hmm. side roads, back roads, dirt roads. A lot of people don't travel those, so that's where we go. And we're boots on the ground, we're eyes, we're, you know, we're getting everybody's story, we're seeing it for ourselves. And that's where it gets to be such a humbling experience for me. Um, and it reminds us how to be grateful and thankful for the things that we have, and it allows me to be a good example for my kids and for the communities. Sure, sure. And that's one of the things you know that always occurs with a disaster, right? Most people, uh, most people will go to the large city. I know for sure. You know, some of us went oh. to Panama City and we went to Mariana, but in the middle of those towns of those big cities, uh, there's people in there in the rural areas that maybe nobody had seen in a, in a while after the hurricane. Is that uh, what you experienced? Yes, sir. That is definitely what we experienced. Um, we was pulling up on um, people living in tents a month after the storm and nobody had been to their house. Nobody. Uh, nobody had Not Red Cross them. because they didn't know that they were back there. You know, little two trail driveways and stuff people think is hunting land. No, people live back there and, and we just don't realize it. You know what I mean? Even I'm surprised sometimes at the things that I find in the areas that they're in. And, and after talking to both of you, I think that's one of the biggest accomplishments that your organization has, uh, has done, that you've gone to the middle of those big cities or in between them where there's people that, that nobody had seen for months sometimes or weeks after the hurricane. Yes. So can you tell us a couple of your success stories that uh, you consider uh, having accomplished in the last year relative to that, related to that? Um, we had one family that lived in the woods in tents um, for nine months and August of this year, they actually um, were finally given a FEMA trailer. And we called the governor's office, we called congressmen, I mean, we called everybody that we could think of to go to bat for this family and help them. And when they got put into the FEMA trailer in August, it was such a wonderful experience for them, the kids especially, because there was kids involved in it, five kids. Mm -hmm. and. Um, 
And some of our elderly couples um, that were living in homes that they shouldn't have been living in, um, they are now in um, either trailers or FEMA campers or things like that. Um, they still have a long way to go, but they're doing so much better than they were. And they're not where they want to be, but they're not in the devastation era yet sure, either. Sure, so I'm pretty sure you guys are very busy on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, last year, obviously, you mentioned already, you know, there was a kid that needed some help or a family mm -hmm. needed some, some help for, for Christmas. Yes. And you all did a lot for Christmas, I know. But uh, yes. there's a special program going on this year, and I want you to tell us about it because it's all about Christmas. It is all about Christmas. It's called Christmas of Hope for 850. And um, basically, we are still trying to hit the families that have been forgotten in the Hurricane Michael area. Uh, we are providing toys. Uh, main thing we do is we ask what their li wish list is. Um, currently, we have 700 kids, over 700 kids, and over 280 families already signed up with us. Um, we will go down the list and we will do everything we can to at least give the children what the, the things that they require, or they're asking that they, for. That they want. Yes, the things they want. Some needs jackets, some needs socks, some, you know, we will provide those needs as well. So basically we are trying to make sure that no kid is left behind and that on Christmas morning they wake up and there is something under their tree for them. That is wonderful. And again, it's called what? Christmas of Hope for 850. Christmas of Hope for 850. 850. All right, well, I wanna make sure that the uh, people that are watching know how they can help you. Give us a couple of ways that they can help you. You can make uh, monetary donations to Have Hope You Matter um, PayPal account. Um, you can go to our website, ha website Have Hope You Matter, and you can learn more about what we do and how to donate. You can buy toys and ship them to our warehouse that we have in Navarre, or um, you can, like I said, make monetary donations or even contact us to volunteer. So, monetary donations, uh, sponsorships. sponsorships. Donations of toys, adopting clothes, children, adopting um, a kid, all yes. kinds yes. of good stuff. Yeah, there's yes. many ways that can be helped, even even having a box for us to have toys dropped off at your business or just anything really because we have a lot of children in need this year. How many kids do you have up, up in the list right now? I know you've uh, <laughs> well, been growing on that list. Yes, yeah. it, it was uh, 700 plus because every, every, I mean, within today I already had three families contact me. Yes. So it's a growing list and there are over 700 children already. Right. And I'm at uh, over 280 families. So. And if there's one message that we can send uh, through this uh, uh, interview mm. is that I know it's been a year since Hurricane Michael hit. Yes. And uh, a lot of people think that everything's back to normal. It's, mm -hmm. it and is it so. is not. There, yeah. It is not back to normal. There's a lot of people still struggling, living in, in uh, dire conditions like you described and especially the kids. Yes. You know, Christmas the, again, second Christmas. Second Christmas. For now after the hurricane, and I know a lot of families still need some help with their kids to have yes. some some kind of a present, a toy or whatever under the tree, and that's what you guys are doing with this program. Yeah, and then and even even a simple Christmas tree, you know. Yeah. I have one family just trying to have something normal for their children this exactly, year. Exactly, exactly, so. what would be normal to, to most people. You yes. know, uh, they are lacking right now, and I think that's the importance of what you're all doing. Normalcy, bringing back some kind of normal for the children, is yes. that's what we're trying to do. Well, we're gonna put up your website, we're gonna put up your email okay. and your phone number uh, on the screen so that people can uh, reach out to you guys yes. uh, with uh, have, have Hope Oop. You Matter. Okay and especially with the Christmas uh, event that you all are, are uh, organizing. Yes. Uh, I want to thank you for coming to uh, talk to us here and making connections, uh, and I want to congratulate you for the great job that you guys have been doing for the last year. Every day, it's an yes. everyday job that you guys are it doing, is. I know, yes. and uh, it's uh, very praiseworthy, and we hope that uh, whoever's watching can, uh, can help you guys out in some way. Thank well, you. We, thank you for having us. Thank you for being here. We'll be right back. ¿Pueden una niña en un pequeño pueblo, un arquitecto en una ciudad importante y un entrenador de escuela secundaria en un suburbio dar forma al futuro de los Estados Unidos? Sí, sí pueden. Porque cada 10 años el censo nos da ese poder. Usted puede dar forma a su futuro respondiendo al censo del 2020. ¿Dónde necesitamos nuevas carreteras para que nuestra vida sea más fácil? ¿Dónde ayudarán los nuevos programas escolares para que nuestros niños se desarrollen bien? 
¿Dónde podría una clínica de salud nueva beneficiar a los barrios? El Censo de 2020 servirá de base para estas decisiones y dará forma a cómo se distribuirán miles de millones de dólares en comunidades como la suya cada año. Y en el 2020 usted puede responder al Censo por Internet, por teléfono o por correo. Es fácil, seguro y es importante. Asegúrese de que usted y todas las personas que usted conoce sean contados. Ahora es el momento de involucrarse. Su comunidad necesita de usted. Juntos podemos educar y animar, inspirar y asegurarnos de que todas las voces se escuchen. Juntos podemos dar forma a nuestro futuro. Hola, my name is Edna Hernandez and I'm here to give you information on upcoming events you cannot miss. Hola, mi nombre es Edna Hernández y les tengo información de algunos excelentes eventos que no se pueden perder. Make sure you do not miss our third annual Unity Gala. Esta gala de unidad será el viernes 6 de diciembre a las 7 y media de la noche. Por solo una donación de $25 dólares por persona, disfrutarás de cena con deliciosos platillos latinos, baile con música en vivo y de DJ. Una subasta silenciosa, silenciosa y también degustación de vinos, wine tasting. Durante esta gala, Connection Media Group otorgará sus premios unidad a tres empresas locales y un individuo. Los premios Unidad son para reconocer a entidades que apoyan, lideran y patrocinan eventos multiculturales en nuestra región. Este año el evento recaudará fondos para la Fundación Boricuas de Corazón, que está basada en Tampa, y los fondos apoyarán su proyecto de ayuda a los damnificados por el huracán Michael en Panama City. Si quieres patrocinar o ir a la Unity Gala, contáctanos al teléfono o correo electrónico en la pantalla. ¡Ya viene la Navidad! Y lastimosamente en nuestra área hay muchas familias que no tienen fondos ni siquiera un regalo para sus niños. Por eso está fundada la fiesta con sabor latino, el milagro navideño en la Costa Esmeralda. Este evento es organizado por United for a Good Cows. La fiesta es para niños, familias de bajos recursos y no importa de qué raza, etnia o religión, todos son bienvenidos. Habrá entretenimiento, cantantes, abrigos, comida, juguetes nuevos y para todos los niños. También habrán concursos con grandes premios, incluyendo bicicletas, nueve citas. Si quieres patrocinar o donar para este gran evento de caridad o si quieres ayudar ese día, Entra a la página de la fundación que estarás viendo en tu pantalla. Y por último, te invitamos a la extravaganza de la noche de Año Nuevo, Titans of Rock. Este sí que será una gran forma de cerrar el año 2019 y darle la bienvenida al 2020, disfrutando del tributo a, de música de grandes grupos Journey en Bon Jovi. El tema del evento es de casino y habrán juegos relacionados, un delicioso buffet y mucho más. Este magno evento será el Village Door Music Hall en Miramar Beach y será pro beneficio de la organización especial Olympics of Okaloosa County. Para más información, entra a la página del evento. Tres grandes eventos para disfrutar y para ayudar y servir a nuestra comunidad. Para información de otros eventos en nuestra comunidad, te invitamos a que visites nuestra página web de Connection o nos busques en Facebook, Instagram, Twitter y YouTube. Gracias por estar con nosotros. Se despide de tu amiga Edna Hernández. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Bye. Welcome back to our show. Uh, my name is David Triana and uh, we have a very special guest uh, with us today. Her name is Megan Caulfield, and Megan is a film director. She was recently recognized with the uh, Best Director Award at the fourth annual Kite Film Festival, which was held in Destin uh, only a couple of weeks ago. That's right. Welcome to our show, Megan. Thank, Thank you, you so for coming. Much. Thank you so much for having me. I'm honored to be here. 
We appreciate it. And I know that uh, the film that, uh, that you um, entered uh, for this film festival is uh, a pretty powerful one. And it's called Deportación, I understand? Yes, that's correct. <laughs> and can you tell us a little bit about uh, what the film is about? Sure, yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, Deportación is a film based on a true story. And it's about a husband and wife that very suddenly get separated as a result of um, problems with immigration, uh, and the, the husband is, is ultimately deported. Wow. So and the scene depicts, um, or the movie depicts the, a very one, one scene where the husband and wife are separated from each other. Now, I noticed you uh, pronounced the uh, name of the film Deportación, which is the Spanish <laughs> way of saying Deportación for me as a Latin American. I can't help it. No, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, do you speak Spanish? I do. I lived, in, um, I lived in Madrid for two years after I graduated from James Madison University. James Madison. And that's where um, I learned to speak Castellano. <laughs> so you are from the Virginia area originally? I am. I'm from... I grew up mostly in Virginia, yeah, that's correct. And how long have you been doing uh, film? Gosh, you know, this Deportación was the first film that I actually wrote and, and produced and directed, uh, and I also acted in. Historically, I had just acted and also been a, a host um, for film and some theater as well. I had never actually produced my own film. This was the first one. But um, just being a part of so many independent films like I have been, I've seen a lot of what goes on behind the camera and increasingly really fell in love with it and decided that I wanted to make my own film and tell a story that was important to me. That is a very important story uh, right now, obviously. Uh, there's a lot of news coverage on the issue of immigration. Yeah. Deportación, deportación means deportation. Yes. Somebody was deported from the U.S. and that's what the film is about. Uh, is there a personal connection to the film? There is, actually, um, extremely personal because uh, the, the, the film is a depiction of what happened to me in my life. Um, so it was obviously a very traumatic experience that I went through um, that happened in 2011, so a number of years ago. And writing the film and producing it and directing it was, was um, a part of my healing process. Okay. You know, it was very cathartic to be able to get the story out and have an opportunity to be heard. Um, which is, I think, m what might be lacking a little bit in the situation with immigration is, is that um, there's not enough people being heard for what, what they're going through and what their experiences are. Um, at least maybe not until more recently we're starting to kind of realize, but um, I think a lot of these issues have been happening for, for quite a long time. And that is, uh, that is so true because you know, obviously you know, it's big news here in the last several years or for the, you know, the last two years especially, yeah. uh, you know, all over the national news, international news and the, uh, the issue of immigration being a, a hot potato politically, nobody wants to touch it. Yeah. Uh, but I think sometimes um, the bad thing about that situation, the deportation of a, of a loved one, whether it's a parent or a child or a husband, a boyfriend, uh, whatever, uh, many people forget the human aspect of it. Uh, right. What do you think about that? I think that was exactly what I was trying to portray in my film was, you know, that, uh, and it's a short film, so it only depicts one, one scene. I'd ultimately love to have the opportunity to turn it into a more of a feature length film so you could get to know the characters a little bit better uh, because they are human, you know, and they were living very normal human lives and then had a very traumatic event happen to them. And, um, you know, mo most people probably are just trying to get by day to day and get through life um, and then have to deal with uh, really horrific, you know, for some people, very horrific events. Mm -hmm. um, so you're right. I agree. There is a big, yeah. a big human aspect to it. An another uh, factor, obviously, has to do with the nationality and ethnicity issue, you know. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is a fact that many people associate the issue of immigration with Hispanics, mm -hmm. you know, and... Uh, Obviously, you are not Hispanic. No, I'm not. <laughs> was your, um, the, in the, your the, boyfriend uh, the, Hispanic? Was actually from Italy. Yeah. Um, so not of Hispanic descent, no. Yeah, so, no. so that, is, that is an important factor, too, obviously, that this occurs to people of all backgrounds, of all ethnicities. Sure. And, uh, you know, it's a tragedy, obviously, because it breaks up families and it breaks up couples and, and all those yeah. things that come with that. And, uh, you know, 
I'm sure you can, you can yeah. attest to the Well, the pain. one thing I can attest to um, is the amount of uncertainty as that's a part of that experience. There's so much that you don't know, and that's what makes it so incredibly difficult, is you feel completely blindsided. Um, and the ability to get information and know how to, you know, what decisions to make and what options are. Even as an American citizen, someone born in this country, that wasn't shared with me. I, I really had no idea. So I can only imagine someone that, you know, um, maybe English isn't their natural language or they're sure. not f as familiar or have the resources to try to get to be familiar, um, how difficult that must be for them. All right. And are you referring to the legal aspect of things? Or? Yeah, the, yeah, the legal aspect of things, I guess, yes, is what Just I'm referring to. Being able to, to know what the next step is or what you can and cannot do? Right. Or get, get kind of any information whatsoever about why certain things are happening. Um, and I have noticed in some other recent um, productions on Netflix even, I've seen that they did a good job of portraying that, like, the amount of uncertainty when some things like that happen because um, immigration enforcement is not, you know, not going to share, <laughs> necessarily share any information with you. Sure, so you're being left uh, in the dark about the situation right, that you right. went through and you don't even know where he is and things like that? Yeah, and there might have been something that could have been done if information was shared. Um, True. So that's one immediate takeaway is that I think if information was a little bit more readily available, then a lot of people can make better decisions right, and maybe right. different decisions that would avoid traumatic experiences from happening. You bet, you bet. And uh, are you um, going to enter your film in uh, other film festivals? I am. It's going through the whole festival circuit as we speak. Um, and I'd like to, you know, I'd like to get into as many festivals and be able to share it as many different places as, as I can. So. Fingers wonderful, crossed. Wonderful. And are you working on, uh, on other other? I'm working features? on a few. Um, I'm working on a few local productions. There's a, a couple of pilots that are being created locally in the area that I'm really excited to to be a part of. Um, yeah, and so so yeah, I'm I'm staying busy. <laughs> yeah, because before deportación, you were the writer, the producer, the director, and you were an actress within it, obviously, I have right? So zero control issues, none whatsoever. <laughs> 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 oh, that's wonderful. I know, I know the story is not a funny one, obviously, but uh, yes, yeah, sometimes that's what it takes, right, to make something happen. You it gotta, was. You got to do it all. It was well, and it was a cathartic experience to be able to tell my story, and so um, it does feel good to be able to talk about it. And thank you for letting you know giving me the opportunity. Well, I, I got a chance to see the film and uh, yes it's short but powerful and uh, it really touched me because uh, I've uh, I've seen this happen now uh, too many times too many times with uh, different uh, people different families and, and the like and that is uh, that is one of the worst things about about the issue of immigration you know the breakup of families and in your case I agree you know a couple that loved each other and, mm -hmm. uh, had to be separated Megan, we want to show a uh, clip from your uh, uh, from your movie. Okay, great. Can you set up the uh, the clip for us? Sure. Um, so uh, this the the clip of the scene that we're going to watch is when uh, my character um, has a very unexpected visitor one morning um, open knock on her door, and I think that's all I can really say. You'll see the rest. <laughs> Got it. Memory rose in here. Yeah, what's going on? Please, don't move! No. What is going on? Oh my Who else is in the house? Go, go, go! Claire! What is happening? Claire. You, Claire. You, Claire. you can't just come into my house like this! Actually, we can't. We can do whatever we need to. Where's what the bedroom? What is this about? It's upstairs! What is... Salma! What is going on? What is this about? Stop it! I, what, are you, he's, what are you doing? He's not dangerous! He's not dangerous! What are you doing? What is going on? What are you doing? Where's your I-130 and your 485? Your immigration papers. Where's the proof that that man is your husband? What paperwork can you show me that you're sponsoring him? The paperwork's in the file cabinet downstairs. Pretty powerful stuff. And I'm sure it brings, a, brings up a lot of memories, doesn't it? It does. Um, I'm proud of that scene, though, because we did it all in one take. Wow. So the scene continues, but um, we rehearsed really hard to get it all done in one take so that it kind of felt like documentary style, like you were actually there and, and witnessing sure. it. Um, and that also helped a lot from an emotional perspective to not have to cut and get different angles. <laughs> so um, so I'm, proud, I'm proud of that, of that shot because we put a lot of time into getting that, that one shot down. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, uh, congratulations on the award as Thank the best you so director much. Thank for you. the Kite Film Festival, and I'm sure the uh, 
film is going to have a lot of success in other films thank or you. film festivals that are out there that I'm sure you're going, to, you're going to enter. We want to thank you for coming and visiting with us, and uh, I'd love to have you back for Thanks. a larger discussion on this issue of uh, love to. immigration and uh, uh, the deportation issue especially. Sounds good. Thanks so much for having me, David. Thank you for coming. We'll be right back. If you've been affected by suicide, you're not alone. Suicide is a leading cause of death that affects millions each year. In most cases, it happens when stressful life events overload the coping abilities of someone suffering from a mental health condition. And the most common condition associated with suicide is depression, an illness that goes undiagnosed or untreated far too often. But the research is clear. Suicide is preventable if we work together. The American Foundation for Suicide Prevention has set a bold goal to reduce the annual suicide rate 20% by 2025. We can save tens of thousands of lives, but we need the help of everyday heroes like you. People have suffered in silence for too long, and too many families have had to weather their losses alone. You can change that. We need you to be the voice for suicide prevention, because talk saves lives. Learn how you can fight suicide. Visit AFSP.org today. We hope you have enjoyed the show, and uh, we invite everyone to support uh, Have Hope, You Matter, the organization uh, that we had uh, today and featured in our show as they continue their Christmas of Hope for 850 uh, project. How did it go? How did you like it? Did you have a good time I, today? Yes, I love it. We have so much information about the next events. I hope to see you guys there. We're going to be there in some of them. And remember, if you have any questions about the information of the events, find us again in Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, or in the uh, connection. Outstanding, outstanding. Uh, in closing, just a few words. Uh, it's Christmas time. Uh, most of us are uh, lucky enough and fortunate enough to have the means to uh, take care of our families, to buy some toys for our kids. But not everybody does so. And uh, that's why we had uh, the Have Hope, You Matter people here. John Bunyan, who is uh, an English writer and author of The Pilgrim's Progress, which a lot of people know, uh, once said, you have not lived today until you have done something for someone who can never repay you. And those words are very true. One of the best feelings you're going to get uh, this Christmas season and any time is to be able to give something to someone who cannot repay you, the needy. This is gonna be our last show for 2019 and uh, God willing, uh, we hope to accomplish many good things with Conexion Media Group in 2020. Unity is very important to us. It's very important to our clients, our collaborators, and the generous, the generous and like-minded people we work with uh, all over the North, Northwest Florida, and Southern Alabama region. With all of that, we hope uh, to continue to succeed in what we're doing. We want to wish everyone that is watching uh, a wonderful, happy, and successful 2020. Any last words for the audience. Just remember, if you know anybody who needs to come to the party, they need some toys, some family needs, bring it with you. And if you can help, just help, but come. It's time to be together. It's Christmas. We want the unity no matter how. If you have, if you don't have anything, just come and celebrate. That's so right. we will see you there. Have a good one.